I was in the middle of editing a different video the other day when I realized something interesting. Right now in the MLB, we have either the tallest or tied for the tallest outfielder, pitcher, catcher, shortstop, and second baseman in baseball history. So I thought, hey, let's put together an MLB all-giant team and see how that would look. The rules are as follows. Every player on the team must be at least 6 foot 5, which is what I would consider giant for the MLB, at least for position players, and have started at least one career game at whatever position I put them at. Also, I will not be selecting a pitching staff since there are plenty of hurlers who are over 6 foot 5, and sifting through them really wouldn't be the point of this video. Instead, we would have a host pitching staff, in this case being the Giants, for obvious reasons. So, with that being said, let's get into it. At catcher, Jacob Stallings. Though he's not the biggest catcher in baseball at 6'5", Grayson Griner takes that cake at 6'6", he is the best backstop of his size, as he's managed a career total of 34 DRS in just 350 games behind the plate with a 4.9 D-War as well. His hitting is much less impressive, with just a 241, 316, 342 slash line, though his mark of 81 as an OPS Plus isn't horrible considering what he brings with the glove. A solid start to our team here for sure. At first base, Freddie Freeman. This one was easy relatively speaking, given Freeman's credentials both at the plate and in the field, all while being exactly 6 foot 5 inches. What are those credentials? Well, a 140 career OPS+, plus, 295 dingers, almost 2,000 career hits, over 400 doubles, and a slash line of 298, 386, and 508. Add to that an above average career DRS of 8, and you've easily one of the best first basemen of his generation and a great anchor for our lineup. At second base, David Hensley. I don't mean to take anything away from the 6 foot 6 inch behemoth of a man at second base, as he does have decent upside considering what he did in the minors last season, but this is kind of a I don't really have any other option here pick. His 16 game sample from last year after all was about as impressive as his 2023 start has been disappointing. He went from a 191 OPS plus to a mark of 24, playing in about the same number of contests. That more than anything speaks to the volatility of a player with less than 30 games of big league experience currently. At shortstop, O'Neill Cruz. This was the first real slam dunk pick for me so far. Not only does he embody exactly what this list is, being the tallest shortstop ever at 6'7", but his insanely high potential long term is exactly what I would want to build the team around. He definitely has things to work on, most notably being his 35% K rate from last year. However, in the early days of 2023, it does seem like he's matured on this front somewhat, lowering that number to 20% through 32 at bats, as well as walking over twice as often as he did last season. Did I mention his two stat cast records yet? One for the hardest throw ever by an infielder at 97.4 miles per hour and one for the hardest hit ball ever at 122.4 miles per hour. Oh, and he has 91st percentile speed. Talk about tools for days. At third base, Chris Bryant. That's right, I'm making the 6 foot 5 Bryant out of the cavernous outfield of course and putting him right back at third base, where he won both his rookie of the year and MVP awards. Yes, it's true he hasn't been nearly as good since his peak, but hey, a 127 OPS plus last year with a 306, 376, 475 slash is nothing to sneeze at. His defense should also be solid. He has career totals of negative 1 outs above average and negative 4 DRS, both just slightly below average at a decently tough position. Throw in his impressive versatility, and I think you have a really good role player who could easily rack up 3 or 4 wins above replacement in any given season. In right field, Aaron Judge. Boom, another slam dunk pick. Judge is not only baseball's biggest outfielder ever at 6 foot 7 inches, he's easily baseball's best right fielder whenever he mans the position. Offensively, he's been one of the best players ever to pick up a bat to start his career, accumulating 226 home runs through his first 751 games to go along with a mind-boggling 162 OPS plus and 580 slugging percentage. Oh yeah, and he also broke the AL record for home runs last year. On top of all of this, he plays elite gold glove defense in right, racking up 60 DRS so far in those same 751 games. This is an all time great talent, and regardless of how his aging affects his legs, I certainly do expect him to maintain a high level of production, at least at the plate, into his late 30s. In center field, Joey Gallo. The 6 foot 5 outfielder has always been good with the glove, putting up a career 42 DRS while spending time at every outfield position. It's with his bat that the real roller coaster comes into play, with his OPS swinging as high as 986 at his best to 638 at his worst. He's come out hot in 2023 with the 193 OPS plus in his first 12 games to go along with 5 homers, but it remains to be seen if he'll be able to keep up some semblance of the same pace going forward. After all, a 37.2% career K rate makes it hard to produce at a high level consistently, even when paired with an above average 14.8% walk rate and elite hard contact numbers. In left field, Jordan Alvarez. As yet another 6 foot 5 slugger, Alvarez brings pop that the others in this lineup, aside from Judge and maybe Cruz at his best, can't really touch. 
aside from his ridiculous 2022 postseason that saw him blast not one, not two, but three game-winning dingers. He's posted elite hitting numbers his entire career, including a 162 OPS+, plus, identical to judges, 104 dingers in just 388 games, and a slash line of 294, 383, 587. When he's right, he's a top five hitter in the big leagues, even if that's really all the value he brings. After all, he's extremely slow, registering in just the sixth percentile for sprint speed, and has posted negative 10 outs above average during his time in left. He's probably better suited as a DH, but we already have someone special there. Speaking of, lastly, at DH, we have Giancarlo Stanton. Is he getting older? Yes. Is he injury prone? Yes. But is he six foot six, formerly the tallest outfielder ever before judge, with still prodigious power and decent metrics? Also yes. 2022 was rough for Giancarlo admittedly, as his 113 OPS+, 462 slugging, 211 batting average, and 759 OPS were all the lowest of his career. However, his quality of contact numbers remained extremely high, as his 95.0 average exit velo was actually his second highest on record, and as recently as 2021, he was crushing 35 dingers with a 516 slugging percentage. He may be on the decline, but I'm betting he has enough life in his bat to make him an above average contributor for a DH in the coming years. So that's the list. I'm going to put up on the screen now what I would like the lineup to look like on a daily basis, and while you're checking that out, make sure to like and subscribe for more content like this, and comment below how many games you think this team would win, again with the Giants pitching staff. Have a great day everyone.